In this video, I will discuss the computer memory that is on board the PIC-16 F1719 microcontroller and how to read to read from and write to the flash program memory. The PIC-16 F1719 uses a couple different types of memory. One is flash, and that is where your code actually gets stored, and the other is RAM, which is volatile and that is where your special function registers live and that is where you can declare variables that can be stored in unassigned RAM locations. Other PICs use the double EEPROM which is electrically erasable programmable read-only memory. Our particular PIC does not and so we will not discuss that much further other than to make sure you're aware that some PICs have a third type of memory which is a little bit slower but also non-volatile. So the basic organization, we've seen this diagram before, but I want to focus on the notion of the flash program memory here, which is where your code is stored, and the RAM, which is where variables are stored. And so your flash program memory has words that are 14 bit wide, 14 bits wide. And you have 15 bits that are used as the program counter to go through from line to line to line as you're going through the various programs that are on board. When you call a subroutine, the stack is used, so that holds 15 bits, just the same size as the program counter. When you have a return, that stack pulls off the latest entry that was put on there, and that's restored to the program counter. So there's 16 levels deep on the stack, and so if you're calling a function and then that function calls another function, that function calls another function, then you can have several layers deep on the stack for every function call. If you end up having more than 16 functions called before you have a return, that is where you will have what's known as a stack overflow, so that can cause a problem. Your RAM can hold the results of various computations, can also take in um, some various other properties along the data bus as you see here and each entry in RAM is 8 bits so because we have an 8 bit architecture you have 8 bits for your words in RAM. So the, the flash program memory is 16k and so that is 16,384 words which are each 14 bits wide. And so that is going to be in memory location 0 through 3FFF. And that's where your program gets stored. But also, at the end of that memory, we have what's known as high endurance memory. And this is effectively the substitute for the double EEPROM. This allows us to store some data. And that data is non-volatile. And so if you are to cycle power and turn it back on, you will be able to retrieve the same value. In class, we will have an exercise where you will learn to write and read that particular part of memory. We also have SRAM, which is static random access memory. And we have 2048 bytes available for that purpose. And that's where you have created variables, whether you're declaring variables in C or where you used aliases with an EQU statement in assembly. There is a nice YouTube video, which I link you to here that is from microchip and that talks a lot about how SRAM works so if you're interested in learning more about this I do recommend you click on that video link um, on the PowerPoint slide. So flash memory is non-volatile so that means when you've written your code out and you turn off power maybe you pack up your trainer kit and go somewhere else and plug it back in the code that was on there will continue to run when you apply power again so Simply cycling power does not erase the flash program memory, which is quite useful. So if you want to turn something off, turn it back on, try it again later, the code will remain. You can also protect your code if you set particular bits in the configuration. So the configuration bits have an option for code protect, and that effectively allows you, if you are preparing something for production and you're certain the code is a good set of code, you don't want it to be overwritten, you can actually protect the code to keep someone from overwriting it. We have largely disabled that because we want to be able to freely change our program whenever we would like. And 
generally, when you're talking about really writing more code to the flash memory, the entire uh, memory location, all of the memory in flash gets cleared out and then the new program is written into the flash memory. So how do you store programs? What gets stored in there? Well, when you write code in assembly, those assembly commands are directly translatable into 14-bit opcodes. If you write code in C, the compiler builds the equivalent assembly commands and then those assembly commands get translated into machine code. Every opcode is 14 bits wide that tells you something about the command itself and various arguments that it needs and you can read all about those opcodes on page 388 in the data sheet and I will show you that table in the next slides. So the opcodes are structured in different ways depending upon what type of command you're talking about. So in some cases you have a byte oriented command where you might have a destination of either the W register or the register itself and so in that case you have this D which is the destination 0 or 1 and then you have F over here which is the address for the register you specify and then the first few bits indicate what that command actually is. If you have a bit oriented command the middle bits there are between 000 and 111 to indicate whether you're operating on bit 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up through 7 in any given register and of course it also has 6 bits there or 7 bits there 0 through 6 for the address and then some other commands are literal oriented so you might have an 8-bit literal that's showing up as the K value down here and the opcode up here and some things have longer literals so things like calls and go to's where you need a little bit more address space those have more bits in there for the literal so let's look at some of our commands if we're talking about byte oriented commands they have a very similar structure and so you can see the first six bits in all of these cases indicate what the instruction is so if you're talking about an ADDWF at W2F then the first six bits are always going to be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. then the destination once you perform that addition whether you want it stored into W which would have a D of 0 or back into whatever register you happen to be adding to W you'd put a 1 there and so then over here for the F's that is the address of the register that you specify. So if you're talking about port A, you need to look up what is the address of port A, and that's what gets put in for the Fs. Decrementing and incrementing skipping of zero, those are byte oriented with skip, and so they have a very similar structure. And then we get into bit oriented, and so in these cases, the specific bit that is referenced gets 0, 0, 0 up through 1, 1, 1 in those B locations. And then we have a bitewise with skip, again very similar structure there. And then down here with literals, most of these cases have K's over here for where the literal values go. In most cases those are 8-bit. In some cases when you're talking about bank select, you don't need all 8 bits and so in this case we only need 5 bits there for the bank selection and then we get on down here to control so this includes things like our return statements this includes our call statements and go to statements and so you can see how they're structured there RAM is volatile and so when you press the reset button the master clear button or you cycle power the data is erased and all of our special function registers get returned to whatever their default values are RAM is used because it's generally faster than the flash to access and it's significantly faster than double EEPROM as well. We have 80 bytes available in each of our banks where variables can be stored in RAM. And so you can see the address is associated with the first four banks, 20 through 6FX, A0 through EF in bank 1, 120 through 16F in bank 2, 1A0 through 1EF in bank 3, etc. Um, so there are 80 bytes in each of those. This should be 80 bytes down here. That's a mistake. So high endurance flash. Some PICs have double EEPROM. Ours does not. And so we use high endurance flash, which is at the end of our program memory, to store some data. 
It's called High Endurance Flash because it is guaranteed to have 100,000 read and write cycles supported. It is still very important that we don't end up in an infinite loop writing and writing and writing to this. And so we want to make sure that um, we do preserve the number of erase and write cycles. So that should be 100,000 times it can be erased and rewritten. The registers associated with reading from or writing to the flash memory include the ones that you see there. They're all in bank 3. And so we have PMCON1 and PMCON2, which is program memory configuration registers. And then we have program memory address registers, ADRH and ADRL. And then we have program memory data registers, DATH and DATL. So let's start out by talking about our program memory configuration registers. You can find more about this on page 121 in your data sheet. Bit 7 is unimplemented. Bit 6 determines whether we are writing to the flash memory or the configuration bits. Bit 5 is for how we're going to load this. So you can specify several different loads at once or you can just do one. And so LWLO is for load write latches only and you can read more about that in the data sheet. And then we have free, which is allowing us to either erase or overwrite the next time we set the WR bit. WRERR tells us whether there was an erase error uh, or a programming error. WREN enables us to do, um, in, in the case of picks where there is a double EEPROM, double EEPROM writes. In our case, that's going to be the, uh, the program memory writing. And then we have our WR and our RD, which actually execute the write operation and the read operation, respectively. And so if you're talking about a write control, it will set WR, and it will go back down to zero once that write operation is done. So you can pull that particular bit to make sure you are done with the writing operation before you proceed. PMCON2 is not actually a physical register, and so if you try to read from it, you're going to get back all zeros. This is what I consider the mother may I register because effectively its entire purpose is to make sure if you're trying to write to the program memory that you're really meant to do that. And so in order to make any writes to the program memory, you have to put the sequence 55 hex followed by AA hex into PMCON2 and then you can set the WR bit to actually do the writing. And so that is the only purpose of PMCON2 is to accept that 5.5 and AA just to make sure you really intended to overwrite your memory. PM.H and PM.L are the data registers and so that's the data that you're going to write to the flash memory or if you're doing a read that is where the read, the read back data comes into and so the low byte is in PM.L and the high byte is in PM.H and so in this case, we will only be using the lower six bits in PM.H because we're talking about 14-bit reads and writes. And the HE, which is the high endurance registers, uh, we're only going to be using the eight bits there. So PM.H is not fully used in that case. And so EE.H is only used if you're talking about program memory data. And for the addresses, the low byte is in PMADRL and the high byte is in, in PMADRH. So when you're trying to access specific addresses, those will go together as a 16-bit uh, combination. So the steps to read first, and then we'll talk about how to write. You need to clear the CFGS, and that basically says we're going to read the flash then you're going to write the address that you want to read from into the PMADRH and PMADRL so that acts like a 16-bit address and then you simply set the read bit, the RD bit and that is in our PMCON1 register that's actually bit 0 as we just discussed and after a short amount of time you can wait about two cycles then you can read the data back in in PM.H and PM. L. Writing is a little bit more complicated, so the first thing we want to do is disable interrupts. So if you had any interrupts configured, 
you want to just say GIE equals zero so that way you can not interrupt. It is very important that you don't get interrupted while you're in the middle of writing to flash memory because that can really mess up um, what it is you're trying to do if you get interrupted and try to handle it. So you want to make sure the write operations are fully completed without any interruption. Then the next thing that is a good idea to do is just to check to see if the WR bit is still set from a previous write operation and just to clear it on out. Then you can set the WREN to enable writing, clear the CFGS to indicate that you're talking with the flash memory. Then you can set LWL0 and that before you put in the address is going to and the data is going to just configure how many entries are going to be read and written to and in this case we are going to put in our address of where we want in the PMADRH and PMADRL then we're going to put the data that we want to write out in PM.H and PM.L and then clear the LWLO register and that will say okay we're going to now write to all of the registers there then we put in our unlock sequence or what I call the mother may I sequence so we write 55 to PMCON2 and then AA to PMCON2 and then we set our WR bit which starts the actual writing process so once we've done all of our permission getting and said where we want the data and what data do we want to be stored then we're going to actually set WR to write it on out and then if you were using interrupts after you've done that then you can re-enable the interrupts and you can handle this by simply polling WR and just do a while WR until it's done or you can set up an interrupt service routine and enable an interrupt on the completion of a double EEPROM write. When you're writing it's very important that you make sure you're not writing to something that is code protected and if you want to learn more about how to write to program memory you can see a good example in section 10-3 on page 116 in the data sheet.